This is the way every newly married couple must learn to get along after marriage. Anna, the wife, goes to work early and puts all the dirty clothes in the washing machine before she leaves home. And Carl, the husband, goes to work late and hangs them out to dry. When Anna comes home from work, she puts the clean clothes in the closet. Because of the difference in their working hours, they cook their own breakfast and did not disturb each other's sleepy time. The only dinner we eat together. Anna is in charge of the early hours of work from Monday to Friday. And on both days of the week, it is left to Carl who has plenty of time. Anna just needs to sit on the couch and wait for the food. Although the taste can be a little lacking, but Anna will give Carl better advice and encouragement every time. For the monthly cleaning, the couple prioritizes the chores they are good at. Anna cleaned the air conditioner filters, and Carl took care of the grease on the stove. If the rest are not willing to do it, they either hire someone to solve it or take it up together. With such a fair and reasonable arrangement, the irritating chores at home become the couple's secret weapon to enhance their relationship. But such a happy life was irreversibly changed by the appearance of a third party. Anna has been feeling drowsy lately, and her appetite is unusually poor. Some experienced colleagues knew she was pregnant as soon as they heard about it. Once the pregnancy test was verified, she was indeed pregnant. Anna excitedly told Carl about the pregnancy. But Carl's attitude was cold. He just left a message that he would go to the hospital to confirm the pregnancy and then went to bed early as usual. The next day, he said good morning and ran off to work, which was a strange reaction for Anna. She rushed to her best friend for help. Her friend, who had been cheated on before, had nothing good to say, saying that no man is a good person and that he doesn't cherish what he gets. Anna, who had no doubt about Carl's character, decided to sit down with him and have a good chat before deciding what to do with the child. As expected, Carl is not the kind of man who plays around with his feelings and is irresponsible. He reassured Anna solemnly. The reason he was so cold yesterday was because he was not ready to be a father and was a bit overwhelmed by the excitement. But now that he's here, he has to work harder than before to try to give Anna a good environment for childbirth. For this reason he also made a special schedule for the pregnancy. Anna was struck by this sudden attention. First they needed a marriage certificate to solve the problem of pregnancy and childbirth in the future. Because it is necessary to register a marriage as a couple in Japan. Carl and Anna were both very attached to their family name and neither wanted to change it. So they never applied for a marriage license. But now Carl is willing to make a concession for it. But Anna wants to change her own. She is not giving in to custom. But considering Carl's job, she is on an annual salary with the company. If she changed her last name, it would be difficult to get her salary into her account. And Anna believed that if the situation was reversed, Carl would also change his surname with her own. Feeling Anna's respect, full of love, Carl promised that he would take care of all the complicated procedures of sensuality and never let Anna worry about a single point. Once a month, he will be worried that Anna is not safe alone. He worked hard not to rest, just to leave a day off, accompanied by Anna to the hospital, until through the machine to see the mother and child safe. He dared to reveal a smile of reassurance. But the real difficulties of childbirth were just beginning now. First, the twelfth week of pregnancy. At first, Anna was disliked by the male colleagues of the team for taking pregnancy leave and for holding her back. It was enough to be forced to apologize. If she left early or was late before the start of her shipping leave, then her salary will be cut by one-third directly during the shipping leave. It's even harder for Carl. His position is irreplaceable. If you want to take time off, you have to work faster than you already do. The 8-hour workday is thus expanded to 12 hours, and he has to clean up after work and take care of cooking. At first Carl understood. He saw Anna wanted to vomit. She could have eaten several bowls of rice directly into the vomit. He patiently asked Anna what she wanted to eat. When he heard about grapefruit jelly, he immediately rushed out of the house and ran for miles to find a dozen stores just to calm her down. He never let Anna worry about the chores he could solve himself. But every day like this, even the most capable person cannot bear. Carl's resentment had been building for a long time, and it finally exploded in Anna's 34th week of pregnancy. On that day, Carl, who was working late, received a message from Anna that she needed tissues. He went a long way to buy tissues for pregnant women. When he got home, Anna was lying on the couch, slowly swiping through the shopping cart, and the coffee table was filled with all kinds of food waste. One more look at the messy home. He had sacrificed too much to take care of Anna. Hearing Carl's anger, Anna couldn't help but feel aggrieved. Just a few hours ago, Anna ordered a tissue delivery, but couldn't get it because her uterus was pressing on her nerves, causing her legs to throb with pain. It's not that she doesn't want to try to solve everything herself, but there's no way to solve it. Just like now she can't stop crying because her hormones are out of control. 
Carl is also very aggrieved. This period of time in order to take care of Anna, he broke all the hard work and emotions, swallowed into the stomach. But even so, the days are still living in this broken mode. Carl fell on his knees and prayed to the gods to save the couple who were so in love a few months ago. The drama ended with mutual apologies from both sides. Carl continued to work late at the office with his tired body, but all he could think about was his pregnant Anna. He felt guilty for losing his temper yesterday. If something happened to Anna at home alone, he would never forgive himself for the rest of his life. The guilt made Carl go home early. What he saw was a clean dining room table, a tidy kitchen, a trash can with no trash, and a spotless couch. Carl thought he had gone to the wrong door, but didn't feel relieved until he saw Anna. Anna told Carl that she was feeling better today, so she had cleaned up the house a bit. It turned out that Anna had always understood how hard it was for Carl to work overtime to apply for paternity leave, and to run around after work to take care of Anna. So she didn't take it for granted, but tried to do everything within her power to relieve Carl's pressure. Carl was moved to tears when he thought of losing his temper with Anna over the housework yesterday. Carl felt ashamed to see her, but Anna hugged Carl and comforted him. The couple's mutual understanding has once again put their lives back on track after what should have been a mess. Tomorrow is the baby's due date and Carl can't stop thanking Anna for all the work she's done over the past 10 months. Just when he was planning what to name the baby after birth and what to do with the family register, Anna was holding her stomach and said her water had broken. The new father was already confused at this time, but Carl calmly called a taxi to take Anna to the hospital. He even stayed by Anna's side for the first hour of labor. With just a glance, he could predict the doctor's next step of giving a painless injection and made the appropriate moves to comfort Anna. This was the result of several books he had read for Anna's smooth delivery. An hour later, with a clear cry, the baby was born. A healthy girl, Carl named her Lisa. The arrival of the new baby made Carl feel like a father for the first time. All the excitement in his heart turned into gratitude for Anna's hard work in childbirth. He sent a photo of the three of them to Anna's family and friends. After the announcement, he went to prepare a banner to represent the safe birth of the baby. The new family of three also entered a new round of challenges. What is the right temperature of water for making formula? How to change the diaper to make the baby comfortable? As the couple struggled with what to do, the television broadcasted news that was 10,000 times scarier than these things. There was a massive outbreak of a highly contagious muscle virus. Carl was scared. But when he heard that free masks and disinfectant would be given out when he went back to work, he decided to let Anna take the kids back to her mother's house. He stayed behind, because he might catch the virus if he went back to work. He will send the extra safety supplies to Anna who is far away. When she saw Carl in danger to protect himself, Anna was so distraught that she couldn't speak. At this moment, she wanted to take the children together and hug Carl. But for the sake of safety, they could only hug each other across the room during the time at her mother's house. In order to reassure Carl, Anna called every day to tell him how she was doing, and recorded the time when Carl was not able to be with the child, and edited it into a photo album and sent it to Carl. She told him that if he persisted one more time, the three of them would be together again. Carl didn't stay idle either, because of the poor internet in his hometown. I heard that Anna had gone to a crowded place to send him these photos, fearing that she had caught a virus. Carl bought a router and asked a friend with a driver's license to drive him back. But on the way, he met Anna who was taking the kids for a breath of fresh air. Carl was so excited that he rushed out of the car, but did not make a sound, but hid in the distance and secretly watched them. It was a cry of pain he had never experienced before he became a father. But for the sake of Anna and the child's safety, he did not go to identify them. He put down the supplies and left without saying a word. Anna, who happened to see this scene, immediately ran to the bridge she had to cross to leave the village and tried to stop him to talk to him. Although hundreds of meters apart, although only a glance, although their life is still as disaster-ridden as it was at the beginning. But this time, both husband and wife understand that as long as they think of each other, no matter how big the wind and waves of life are, they can't knock down this solid tower of love the hardships they had experienced would eventually turn into syrup to nourish their love. After the epidemic is over, they will be the sweetest of partners. Long time no see. Welcome home.